Rivers created much of the landscape we inhabit. They deposited fertile sediment on the floodplains that we farm, and in many places their flowing water provides power to generate the electricity that lights our homes. This lesson takes a closer look at how water flows through stream systems from small creeks to large rivers. We have one learning objective. We will explain what happens to the water in a stream channel as it travels down the length of a stream from its source to its mouth. Streams flow downslope from high elevations to low elevations. Near their headwaters, slopes are steeper with higher gradients that may result in streams dropping several tens of meters per kilometer. Think about waterfalls and rapids. This high gradient part of the stream is characterized by erosional processes. Near its mouth, a stream flows over a nearly flat floodplain. These sections of the stream experience deposition and gentle stream gradients of less than a meter per kilometer or just a few feet per mile. The characteristics of a stream vary traveling from its source to its mouth. A typical stream channel is supplied by additional water from tributaries that connect to a main channel and forms a delta where it empties into an ocean or lake. We will examine how various characteristics of stream flow vary along the length of the stream. In particular, we will take a look at sediment size, flow velocity, channel size, discharge, and sediment load for the stream. If we were to examine the maximum size of sediment that had been carried in the stream, we would see relatively large boulders close to the headwaters, a mix of sand and gravel farther downstream, and silt and clay producing muddy waters in the low gradient section of the stream. So a graph plotted of sediment size versus distance along the stream would show a decrease in sediment size from headwaters to mouth. So we know that different parts of the stream are dominated by different sediment sizes, but much of the central section of the stream will have a mix of sediment including clay, sand, and gravel. Flow velocities can vary daily or seasonally resulting in different materials being eroded, transported, and deposited at different times. Exactly what is happening at any given time is largely dependent upon the velocity of the stream flow. We're going to use a type of graph known as the Hulström diagram to illustrate key concepts about the erosion, transportation, and deposition of different particle sizes. First, notice that the x-axis of the graph indicates grain sizes from clay to sand, ranging all the way up to large gravels. The y-axis shows flow velocity increasing upwards. At low velocities, streams can carry clay and sand-sized particles, but don't move fast enough to transport gravels. Consequently, we can divide this lower part of the graph into two parts. The area on the left represents flow velocities that are sufficient to transport clay and sand, and the area on the right indicates the gravels will be deposited in the channel if velocities drop below the line. Erosion will take place at higher velocities. As might be expected, it will take higher flow speeds to move gravel than sand. But you might be surprised to learn that sand can be eroded at lower stream velocities than mud, mainly because it doesn't have the same cohesive properties, so individual grains can be picked up and moved more easily. Let's fill in a little more detail on the diagram by showing the divisions between the different grain sizes and adding some specific flow velocities along the y-axis. Finally, let's add some typical stream flow velocities that range from about one half to four miles per hour or about 30 to 180 centimeters per second. We see these velocities in sections of streams like the Colorado and Mississippi rivers. Notice that these velocities, we would expect to see the transportation of clays, transportation and erosion of silt and sand, and transportation and deposition of gravels and larger particles. At typical flood velocities, even the larger gravel particles are transported, while all other particles are eroded. If we measure the velocity of stream flow along the length of a river, we would discover that velocity steadily increases as the river flows downstream. This is due to a variety of factors, chief among them the increase in channel size and decrease in the roughness of the channel. This quick tour of the Mississippi River illustrates that we see both an increase in channel size and in the amount of water carried by the river as we travel downstream. For each stop, we will examine a hydrograph that plots discharge over the course of a year. Beginning outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, we can see that discharge stays relatively low all year, with a small bump for spring snowmelt. Flying to just south of St. Louis, Missouri, we now see the river after the addition of large volumes of water from the Missouri drainage basin. Peak flow is now approaching 300,000 cubic feet per second during the late spring. 
Continuing downstream, the Mississippi is joined by the flow from the Ohio and Tennessee drainage basins on the western slope of the Appalachians. And near Memphis, we can see the average April discharge is now over 700,000 cubic feet per second. One last hop takes us to a stretch of river north of New Orleans where discharge increases again, though more modestly this time. As with each previous location, we see high discharge volumes in the spring and lowest flows during the fall. So both channel size and discharge increase as we move downstream. The addition of large tributary stream systems like the Missouri or Ohio rivers can result in a significant increase in discharge over a relatively short distance. Streams tend to pick up sediment as they flow downstream. As they become larger and experience greater velocity and discharge, they can transport greater volumes of sediment that is eventually deposited at the mouth of the river in a delta. So the series of idealized graphs we created for this lesson help illustrate that streams increase in size as they flow downstream and that this is reflected by increasing flow velocity and discharge. In addition, the streams can transport greater volumes of sediment that become smaller as we approach the mouth of a river where most of it is finally deposited in a delta. We just had one learning objective for this lesson. How confident are you that you could complete this task?